Channel 13, where the news comes first. Next on Good Morning Colorado, Republican delegates from across the entire state are in Colorado Springs this morning, and so is presidential candidate Ted Cruz. We are live from the World Arena with what you can expect from today's convention. We'll be tracking a pair of storms that will make their way through the region as we go through the next couple of days. We'll let you know what that does to our forecast coming up. Plus, more road work is beginning in Colorado Springs. It's all thanks to city taxpayers. We'll show you where the 2C project is getting underway. Good morning, Colorado. Thanks for joining us. It's 8 a.m. on your Saturday, April 9th. I'm Bonnie Silkman. A very busy night for Colorado Springs police after two shootings. They both happened within one hour. It's new information for you this morning. Now, one shooting happened at 2.30 this morning in the 1500 block of Keith Drive. That's near the intersection of Powers and Platt. Investigators say a woman was being followed by two vehicles when she was shot in the shoulder. She was taken to the hospital. She is expected to be okay. No arrests have been made. Now, the second shooting, that one happened around 1.40 this morning near the J Live Club off Astrazon. Police tell us that one person was shot. They are now in the hospital. No condition, no word rather on their condition. Now investigators were alerted to this shooting. They got a call from someone inside of the club. Officers also say they found several vehicles with bullet holes in the club's parking lot. No arrests have been made in that shooting either. Anyone with information about either of these shootings is asked to call Springs Police. That number 4447000 or Crime Stoppers. That number 634 stop. Police are investigating both of these shootings. We'll of course keep you updated. All right, we want to talk about our weekend weather, of course. Happy weekend, everyone. A live look in Colorado Springs with our underwater connection neighborhood weather network cameras, 40 degrees. And Storm Trucker 13's meteorologist Jay Polk has been telling us uh, this morning that we have a quarter of a nice weekend in store for us, right? So, so Jay, if you're going to get outside now, is probably the time to do it. That's right. Maybe even as much as three eighths or a half, Bonnie. Oh, wow. Little fractions this morning for us. Because <laughs> oh, we are going to see nice starts to the day, but there will be chances for showers. Isolated storms can't be ruled out either as we go through the afternoons. I 25 in Garden of the Gods. Traffic flowing smoothly today, but underwater. Speaking of water, there could be some falling from the sky as we go through the next couple of days. We'll call for that chance for afternoon showers and storms. One of the things that we're tracking for you as we go through the next couple of days. Mild temperatures, though, are in the forecast overall. Monday morning drive could be a bit of a a slick one, especially up in Taylor County, where there could be some snow possibly piling up at times in some areas. As we look at our temperatures, they're fairly mild as we start off the morning. We talked about how mild it'll be this afternoon. It'll be pretty mild this morning, too. 48 in the Springs, 46 in Pueblo, near 50 as you head out the door in Canyon City at 49, 45 in La Junta, 48 in Feeling Great in Walsenburg, 49 in Trinidad, 30s and 40s up in the high country, 46 in Salida, 33 in Leadville, 44 in Denver, 37 in Burlington. Skycast as we go through this afternoon, there's a chance for showers. Notice as you go through the Pikes Peak region, some of that, of course, in the highest elevations like Pikes Peak could fall in the snow form, but for the most part, we'll just see plain old rain this afternoon. As we go through this evening, watch out for an isolated clap of thunder or two to pop up. Skycast has some heavier showers over the springs at that point. As we go through Saturday night at 6 o'clock, it becomes a little more scattered. We'll continue to see chances for those scattered showers. We go through 8 o'clock, all fading away late tonight and into our early Sunday morning. We are going to continue to see very mild temperatures, though, as we go through the afternoon. 68 in the spring, 75 in Pueblo. Our high temperatures for today, a few degrees above normal. Tracking those showers and that forecast for you coming up in just a couple of minutes, Bonnie. Jay, thank you. We're just one hour away from the start of the state Republican convention right here in Colorado Springs. More than 3,500 people are expected to attend. KRDO News Channel 13 Scott Harrison is live at the Broadmoor World Arena to preview today's event. And Scott, this begins the process of weeding out candidates we'll vote for this fall. Yeah, that's right, Bonnie. Good morning, everyone. First of all, we want to kind of describe to you what the scene is like out here at the World Arena this morning for the Republican State Convention. We're on the I-25 side of the World Arena. It's not so much because of security, but because of the traffic congestion from all the people converging on the arena here trying to get in. I'm going to step out of the way very quickly here and kind of zoom in and show you some of the activity there. You can see there's a line of people outside waiting to get in, already excited about the convention coming up here today. So this is what it's looking like here. It's hard to get into this area. I-25, 
leg drive and circle drive. Just beware of that congestion and try to avoid the area if you're not going to the convention. Let's take you to some video from one of our early reports on this convention. Now, Ted Cruz appears to be the top choice among Colorado Republicans for the presidential race. We've been telling you about that, that um, of course they're going to, he hopes to win that state officially this weekend at the convention, but Cruz remains a big factor in the presidential race. He's expected to speak here at 12.30 this afternoon. But of course, there are plenty of other candidates seeking attention and support. Now, still leading the GOP presidential race, though, is businessman Donald Trump. And some Colorado delegates are still on his side. So Trump will not be here, though, for this weekend's convention. But it's still shaping up to be an interesting and exciting event for our state. Now, we're going to have team coverage throughout the day. And then coming up in our next half hour, we'll look at what the economic impact of businesses might be because of all the people coming here for this convention. We're live at the Broadmoor World Arena today. Scott Harrison, KRDO News Channel 13. Scott, thank you so much. Also today, enforcement begins for the new and controversial sit-lie ordinance in Colorado Springs. Again, beginning today, first-time violators will be ticketed. After that, they could be fined as much as $500 or jailed for as long as 90 days. Organizers are also planning a stage to stage a sit-down protest at the Acacia Park starting later this morning. Street crews in Colorado Springs have appreciated the nice spring weather we've been seeing this week as they begin their work on the 2C Sales Tax for Streets project. Now, it's the five year project that will raise $250 million to pave some of the worst streets and decrease the need for constant pothole repairs. The first step involves cement work. Crews are replacing curbs and gutters to provide a solid base for the asphalt that comes later. Really what we're trying to do is protect the asset. Uh, we don't want to come in and pave a brand new road uh, and have water infiltration get underneath that brand new road uh, through cracked concrete uh, in curb and gutter uh, and, and negatively impact that new roadway that we have. We want to keep our good roads good. Now crews are working in five different areas of the city. The concrete work should be finished by the end of May. Pedestrian deaths and near deaths are on the rise nationwide, including here in southern Colorado. And as the days get warmer and longer, more and more people are out and about, and it's a good remind, a reminder rather, to share the road. Patrick Rizzo, an avid runner, knows this risk all too well. He was hit by a truck while running a few years ago. Both he and the experts emphasize it's important to be aware. Definitely safety while running is something I take pretty seriously as I've been victim of safety and also, you know, driving, you can never be too attentive. Whether that's motorcyclists, bicyclists, or runners, we're all sharing the road and we all have equal rights to the road. There's also special markings on the road, such as share rows, that drivers should become familiar with so that they know what special lane markings are for bicycle travel. Law enforcement officials are also warning drivers and pedestrians to stay off their phones. Time now, 8.08. Ahead on KRDO News Channel 13, did police catch a suspect believed to have helped carry out last month's terrorist attacks in Brussels? We are breaking down the details of the latest arrest in Belgium that may have led investigators with a break in the case. Plus, people in Washington are breathing easier this morning after police apprehended a man who escaped a state psychiatric institute. We'll have the details on his capture. That's coming up. This is looking pretty good as we look at the regional airports this morning. You can tell you, see the delays are less than 15 minutes, not only in the springs, but also at Denver, 44 degrees of temperature there. We're in the mid-40s already in the springs. Temperatures are in the 20s, 30s, 40s, and 50s at all the hubs that we can fly to from the springs this morning. We'll share the details in that forecast, take you around the region, show you those two storms that we'll be tracking for you coming up in just a couple of minutes.
Good morning, everyone. A beautiful view in La Vida right now in Werfano County with our new Vera Wireless Neighborhood Weather Network cameras. That just is so picturesque. Uh, another reason we love living in Colorado, of course, and our time is now 8 11 on your Saturday morning. New developments this morning in the terror investigation in Belgium. Investigators have captured a suspect who may be that mysterious man who was wearing a hat. He was caught on camera moments before and after the deadly bombings at the Brussels airport. ABC's Alex Marquardt has more on the story from Belgium. It's new for you this morning. This morning, the burning question is the hunt for the so called man in the hat over. Belgian authorities believe he could be one of the five men now in custody. Here, a video of one of the dramatic arrests on Friday, shot from a neighbor's window. Police pinning the man on the ground, his hands behind his back, then dragged away. The biggest arrest, Mohamed Abrini, a 31-year-old Belgian, also tied to November's Paris attacks. He was seen two days before at a gas station with Paris attacker Salah Abdeslam. Today, authorities investigating whether he's the infamous man in the hat from the Brussels airport. New video released by police this week showing the suspect casually walking away as suicide bombers detonated their explosives in the departures hall. Those attackers and bombs came from this Brussels apartment, a virtual bomb factory, and Abrini's DNA was found inside. The man in the hat was spotted by a surveillance camera again almost an hour after the airport attack. His coat gone, looking like he's on the phone. It's just before the bomb at the Malbec metro station goes off at 9-11 a.m. Now, Belgian authorities also trying to figure out if a suspect they have in custody, named Osama K, was at the metro station with the suicide bomber. The same suspect seen at a mall, they say, buying those bags used in the airport attack. That was ABC's Alex Marquardt reporting. Now, this is the first time Belgium authorities have acknowledged a second suspect at the metro station. The man they have in custody was using a Syrian alias. Both men are believed to have gone to Syria to join ISIS and then made their way back to Europe. Investigators in Washington state say that the second man who escaped from a state psychiatric institute is now back in custody. Police found 28-year-old Anthony Garber. That's the man on the left you see here. He was hiding near his parents' house in Spokane. They found him yesterday evening. He was arrested without incident. He's being treated for severe dehydration. He was facing charges after allegedly killing a woman in 2013. He was declared incompetent to stand trial. Investigators say this is the second time Garver has escaped. I feel outstanding that none of my citizens were injured by this individual. And again, the state of Washington needs to figure out how to keep him from escaping. This cannot happen again. Both Garver and 58-year-old Alexander Adams, the man on the right you just saw there, they escaped on Wednesday. Adams was found on Thursday. Half a dozen firefighters are recovering this morning after fighting a massive blaze in New Jersey. Still ahead, we'll show you how many businesses were burned by these flames. Plus, the man accused of starting the King Fire in California is now admitting his guilt. We'll show you the key piece of evidence investigators say sealed the deal. Hey, we're going to be tracking the storms with us as we go through this weekend into the early portion of next week. The best way to do it is to get our Storm Tracker 13 app at the App Store or on Google Play. Temperatures right now around the west are sitting in the 40s. There are some 30s around as well, even some lower 60s in places like Phoenix and Dallas. We'll show you what part of the west our next storms are coming from coming up in just a couple of minutes.
and a best start to our Saturday morning around southern Colorado. A mix of sun and clouds as we take a look at our Parkview Medical Center camera. Pueblo, 17th Street and Grand Avenue. Fairly mild, too. 46 degrees is our temperature, and we're seeing a calm wind as we look out from the hospital towards the southeast. Highs today are going to top out in the middle 70s in the Steel City, 75 in Pueblo, 74 in Canyon City. 68 is your high today in the Springs. Some places in the Plains are going to get to or just above 80 degrees by the end of the afternoon. 80 for Lamar, 78 in La Junta, 79 in Springfield. Temperatures south of Pueblo are sitting in the lower 70s in Walsenburg and Trinidad. 40s, 50s, and 60s up in the mountains. 65 for Salida. 46 in Leadville, 61 your high today down in the San Luis Valley in Alamosa. Zooming out now to the western view to give you an idea of where that next storm system is coming from. We can see some showers beginning to spread their way into Colorado from New Mexico as we went through last night and early this morning. We're going to see more of that as we go through this afternoon. Showers coming at us from the west and southwest from the four corners and making their way through the state. You can already begin to see a few showers over the far western portion of Colorado over towards Grand Junction and down towards Durango and Montrose. Continue to see some showers also in California. It's a fairly wet pattern setting up for us over the next couple of days. We talked about two storm systems that we'll be tracking for you as we go through our Saturday and into our Sunday and Monday. You can see both storms, the one off to our north, which has a fairly potent cool front attached to it. And this one here coming at us from the Pacific, from the desert southwest and the Pacific coast. It's going to make its way just off to our south and pull up some warm, moist air from the Pacific Ocean and from the Gulf of Mexico. That'll be the moisture source. This one here will be the source of the cool air. That'll give us, of course, a chance for some snow mixed in with some rain as we go through our Sunday night and into our Monday morning in places like Teller County, which could make for a fairly messy commute for you. By Monday morning, 8 o'clock, you can see lots of rain, especially along and east of I-25 attached to this front. And, of course, as you head up into the higher elevations at that point, we'll begin to see some snow. So, how much snow are we talking about? Well, two of our longer range models have some differences to them. About four inches in Colorado Springs, and of course, higher totals as you head off to the west of town, according to the American GFS model. The European model is somewhat drier. It has about an inch and a half in Colorado Springs. I'm going more with the American model this time. I think there will be some decent amounts of snow up in the Teller County to make for a fairly slick Monday morning commute for our friends in Woodland Park. Temperature sitting in the mid to upper 60s on Saturday and Sunday, then we'll drop off to right around 50 on Monday. Upper 50s to upper 60s to right around 70 by next Thursday in the Springs. In Pueblo, our temperatures well, they are going to be sitting in the lower to middle 70s as we go through this weekend. Then it's middle 50s on Monday, so we see the temperatures here dropping off of the table too. Upper 60s and 70s take us through the rest of the forecast. Can you see? Lower to middle 70s for us as we go through Saturday and Sunday. Then it's lower to middle 50s on Monday. 60s and 70s take us through the rest of our forecast. Chance for rain and snow is there all the way into the middle portion of next week. Teller County, upper 50s and lower 60s at first, then temperatures drop off into the lower 40s for your highs on Monday. Pretty good chance for some rain and snow as we talked about that slick Monday morning commute, uh, wet slushy type of snow, Bonnie, for us. A fairly typical springtime type snow. Not bad for the moisture content, though. We can get a little moisture mixed in. It helps to reduce the fire danger, of course. It helps to green up the grasses and mm -hmm. so forth. And, of course, the trees, too, which we're starting to see bud, by the way. Some trees yeah. behind our building, yep. behind our Caridio News Channel 13 studios now, are beginning to get some green buds on them. Yep, that is Spring nice is to here. see. It's beautiful. Mm -hmm. All right, Jay, thanks so much for the heads up. Appreciate You're it. You're welcome. At least six firefighters in New Jersey are recovering this morning after fighting a massive fire in the city of Keyport. This fire started on the Keyport waterfront yesterday. It quickly overtook at least three businesses. One of those buildings collapsed. A firefighter fighting these flames suffered smoke inhalation. Six firefighters were injured. All of them are expe expected to make full recoveries. The cause of this fire is under investigation. The man who allegedly started the massive King fire in California has pleaded guilty. Wayne Huntsman was taken into custody after investigators found this video. Now, he shot it of himself near the fire in which he is boasting about being in danger. Now, prosecutors say that video was the key piece of evidence in this case. Yesterday, Huntsman apologized in court for what he did. The court ordered that he pay $60 million in restitution, but the victims of this fire are not sure they'll ever see any of that money. Well, they sure screwed my life up. I it was really bad, too. Two months before the fire, my insurance company that I had for 24 years canceled me. It was going to be my retirement. It was going to be my grandson's college education. It's gone. The guy made a mistake. You know, and it costs a lot of people a lot of heartburn. 
Huntsman never said why he started the fire. He's expected to also serve prison time. He will have to register now as a convicted arsonist. Well, it's a big day for fans of the Colorado Springs switchbacks. Still ahead, we'll let you know when their home opener against Arizona United kicks off. And we'll bring you your game day forecast. Coming up in sports, well, it's the uh, biggest story in baseball, biggest story in sports really right now. And he goes by the name of Trevor, plays baseball in Denver. Don't know if you heard of him. Hear from him next. Good morning, I'm Nick Rothschild, and this is your morning sports update. Folks, have we run out of cheesy name puns for Trevor Story yet? I mean, at this point, we've gone from novella to fairy tale to full blown epic poem. Seriously, we're in the Iliad and the Odyssey territory here. Not to mention that Story's accomplished more in four baseball games than some Roman Caesars. Uh, but I digress. Add two more dingers to the tally yesterday. That brings his 2016 total up to six in just four games. Story was happy to contribute, but he was not pleased with the Rockies. 13 to 6 home loss to the Padres. I like to bring good energy to the team. Um, you know, and if one of my performances is a bright spot, then that's good. But, you know, the ultimate goal is to win. And, you know, we didn't do that today. Speaking of story, after the game, sports director Rob Namnum caught up with the young shortstop who's quickly rewriting those major league record books. Trevor's story hasn't left a mark. He's made a dent by hitting a home run in his first four big league games. Take a good look. You won't see it for long. You know, I never could have thought that, you know, this would, it would start out like this. But, yeah, it's been, it's been great so far. Every time he comes up to play, like, I kind of expect something crazy to happen. So, it's been pretty cool. For me, I hope he just keeps hitting like that. And, uh, you know, he's going to go to the Hall of Fame. <laughs> <laughs> and the home runs he's hit. They're not scraping the wall. They're 415 feet. They're impressive. Yeah, no, they're bombs. They're bombs. Yeah, there's no cheap ones. And uh, obviously, hopefully he can keep it up for us because, um, you know, he's an impact bat and we need him to be that for us. I'll just kind of describe it as surreal. Um, you know, I, those first couple games, I felt like I was kind of in a dream. Um, and then, you know, coming back here, is it's just so fun to play in front of our fans. He's doing something that not even the greatest player in history, Todd Heldon, 
uh, did when he was young. Through four games in his Major League Baseball career, Trevor Story has steamrolled National League pitching. Now, I asked him after the game if at, at any level, whether it be Little League or high school, if he ever hit six home runs in a four-game span, and he told me he never had. Reporting from Coors Field in Denver, Rob Namnum for KRDO News Channel 13 Sports. All right, thank you very much, Rob. Now, before the first pitch, the MLB had to hand out a little bit of hardware. Nolan Arenado got his gold glove and the Defensive Player of the Year trophy. Then later on, Arenado was joined by Carlos Gonzalez to receive their Silver Slugger awards. It's a moment both guys will remember forever. You know, I really try to take in the moment. I try to really try to appreciate it. Um, try to focus on the fans and really hear them, you know, hear their cheers. You know, it's special uh, just to be recognized and, and having something that you will never, that you will, you will always have forever, and you know, for your kids, it's, uh, it's a is a blessing. Last night, the Denver Nuggets hosted the San Antonio Spurs, and Coach Pop loose ball. Will Barton ends up with it. He drops it off for Jakar Sampson. Woo, with the windmill slam, take another look. The Nuggies deal the Spurs their second straight loss. And I'll leave you with this. Are we sure? Now, are we really sure Trevor Story didn't suit up for the Nuggets last night? I don't know. We'll put some calls in and find out. Have a great rest of your day. That's a look at sports. Nick, thank you. Also ahead today in sports, the Colorado Springs Switchbacks are gearing up for their home opener. The team will be taking on Arizona United at the Switchback Stadium today. Now, they're riding pretty high after scoring their first big win in Oklahoma City two weeks ago. Kickoff starts at 1.30 this afternoon. In case you can't make it, you can always listen to it live on KRDO News Radio 105.5 FM and 1240 AM. It's been a very busy few weeks for Pueblo police officers after making yet another marijuana bust. Find out what approach officers are now taking against pot criminals and what the community wants to do about the recent number of police stings. And firefighters have a warning for people after a massive apartment fire this week in Colorado Springs. What they want more people to remember while at home. That's coming up. Hey, for a Bonnie talk about it, we were going to bring you that forecast for the switchbacks. Well, here it is. Temperatures going to be sitting in the mid to upper 60s. When they kick it off against Arizona at 1.30 this afternoon, watch out for a few showers. Isolated rumble of thunder can't be ruled out either. Temperatures will fall into the mid to upper 60s as we go through the early portion of the game and then lower to middle 60s later on. Winds out of the southwest at a light clip. Details in that seven-day forecast. Let you know what happens as we go through the next couple of days. It features some big changes in it. That's during the second half. Good morning, Colorado. Okay, sound check, one, two, three, audio check, test, one, two, three, testing, one, two, three, all right. Okay, sounds good, thanks. Caleb, what'd you say? Okay, oh, got you, got you. All right, let's do it the same way we did it. At, let's do this the same way we did it at the top of the hour. Is that good for you? All right, let's do it. Yep.
from Southern Colorado's high definition news leader. This is News Channel 13, where the news comes first. Good morning, everyone. Thanks for joining us. It's 833 on your Saturday, April 9th. I'm Bonnie Silkman. Well, we want to get right outside for you this morning. A live look in Manitou Springs, 44 degrees. You can see blue skies and sunny. A few people already out and about this morning and calm winds. We're going to kick things over to Storm Trucker 13's meteorologist Jay Polk. And Jay, pretty good news for the start of our Saturday, but uh, things kind of unravel after that, I guess, for lack of a better uh, term there. Well, we are going to see a chance for some showers. Could even hear a couple of rumbles of thunder as we go through this afternoon. By and there it is, the incline. How about you? Will you take it today? Well, if you're going to take it, you're going to have to. Well, you're going to have to do it early. We don't necessarily have to do it early, but you want to do it early as you go through the morning into the afternoon. Here's your biking and hiking forecast for today. Temperatures topping out in the upper 60s in the springs, lower to middle 70s in Pueblo. Some places like the John Martin Reservoir could reach 80 degrees by the end of the day. Watch out for some showers, though. Again, we talked about some rumbles of thunder possible as we go through the afternoon. Right now, temperatures around the region are sitting in the 30s and 40s. 48 in the springs, 46 in Pueblo. Already middle 50s in Springfield at 54, 30s and 40s up in the mountains, 43 in Gunnison, 33 in Leadville. Zooming in out of the Pikes Peak region, it is 42 in Woodland Park, 38 in Divide, 48 at Monument, 49 in Peregrine, 40, 39 rather at Brigade, 48 at Black Forest. And as we head down towards Pueblo, temperatures here 48 at Pueblo West at the zoo, 46 at the Riverwalk downtown, 53 at Wetmore, 45 in West Cliff, 41 at Copper Gulch, 34 at La Vida Pass, 50 in Walsenburg, 44 in Aguilar. 42 in Trinidad, 38 at Purgatory River. Your highs for today around the region, we talked about 60s and 70s in the springs in Pueblo, and you see them again. 74 if you're heading to the Royal Gorge Park in Canyon City. And we talked about those possible lower 80s out in the plains, and there's 80 for Lamar. 78 in La Junta, 40s, 50s, and 60s in the high country, 65 your high today in Salida. Complete forecast lets you know what our models are thinking in terms of snow totals over the next couple of days. Yes, we're talking about snow, even though temperatures today will be in the 60s and 70s. All those details in that forecast take you to your hometown for your high temperature today too comes up in just a couple of minutes. All right, Jay, thank you. Thousands of people are in Colorado Springs for today's GOP convention, and it's giving many local businesses a big boost. KRDO News Channel 13 Scott Harrison joins us now live from the Broadmoor World Arena with a look at the convention's economic impact. Good morning, Scott. Well, good morning, Bonnie, and good morning again, everyone. Since we joined you at the top of the hour, we're able to get a little closer to the activity here outside the state Republican convention. And again, I'll step out of the way briefly and take the camera in a little bit closer to give you an idea of just how many people are here. You can see the parking lot's full. There's the front entrance to World Arena, and you can see the people who are still just kind of pouring into here. Estimates are 3,500 people are planning to attend this convention. It looks like every one of them, and probably more than that, are here too. And many of these people who are coming here are bringing friends and family as well. Let's take you to video from an earlier report that we brought to you. Now, as with any large event, the big crowds are giving many local businesses a shot in the arm. Many of the attendees are staying at the Double Tree Hotel, which is just across the street from here. And that's just down the street also. Now, employees from some of the shops in this area say they're looking forward to a busy day today. I love knowing that there's going to be like a show at the World Arena or like something at the Double Tree because then I know it's going to be busy at work. Now, the convention is set to kick off in about a half an hour. Presidential candidate Ted Cruz, now we know he's been getting a lot of momentum from recent victories in other states. He's expected to start speaking at around 12.30 this afternoon. But this event is not open to the public, and that only those registered with the state Republican Party will be allowed to get inside and attend this event. But we will have team coverage of it for you, so stay tuned to us for the latest information about this big event in Colorado Springs. Today, reporting live outside the Broadmoor World Arena, Scott Harrison, KRDO News Channel 13. Scott, thank you so much. Well, meanwhile, both Democratic candidates are ramping up their campaign efforts in the Big Apple, where more than 200 delegates are at stake. ABC's Mary Bruce is covering both candidates' efforts in your decision 2016 coverage. A homecoming for Bernie Sanders, the Brooklyn native rallying supporters on the street where he grew up. Thank you all. For coming out to my old neighborhood. 
With the big contest here just 10 days away, the Democratic candidates are in a New York brawl for the 247 delegates at stake. I like the beef on <laughs> wet. Hillary Clinton is also reminiscing, remembering her time as a New York senator and the good grub during a trip to Buffalo. I ate more chicken wings and beef on, <laughs> beef on wet than I can remember. Hope to get some before I leave. And on The View, Sanders passing a key test, proving he eats pizza like a true New Yorker. Now show us how it's done. Are you all ready? Yes. I can. I can. After one of the nastiest weeks of the campaign, the candidates seem to be dialing it back. You, you may have heard Senator Sanders say, I'm unqualified to be president. Well, seriously. <clears throat> Clinton says Sanders is qualified to be president. I will take Bernie Sanders over Donald Trump or Ted Cruz anytime. Sanders agrees he will support Clinton if she's the nominee. ABC's Mary Bruce reporting the New York primary begins on April 19th. Heads up for drivers. Anyone headed north through Colorado Springs on I-25 tonight will want to be on the lookout for a big detour. Looking ahead to tonight, starting at 8 p.m., the northbound lanes of I-25 will begin closing from the South Nevada exit to the exit at Cimarron. Now, CDOT is asking drivers to exit at South Nevada. Then you can drive north until you turn left at Cimarron. That's where you can head back onto the highway. Now, this closure is expected to last until about 8 o'clock tomorrow morning. Again, it begins at 8 o'clock tonight till 8 a.m. tomorrow. Colorado Springs firefighters are issuing a warning about smoking outside during high fire danger season. A cigarette that was not properly put out sparked this large apartment fire in Colorado Springs on Tuesday. Investigators say it caused $2.8 million in damages. With high winds and warmer temperatures, conditions are ripe for fires. People often will snuff out their, their cigarettes in a potted plant. Well, sometimes potted plants have combustible materials in them. It might have some shredded wood or bark or the fertilizer might be combustible. So you think that you're snuffing it out, but it might be in a place where you can actually catch that material on fire. Firefighters also warn to make sure all sources of fire are extinguished, not just cigarettes and cigars. Another illegal marijuana grow was busted in Pueblo County. The latest sting comes as a group tries to ban recreational marijuana in the county. KRDO News Channel 13's Katie Spencer spoke with the sheriff about the fight to stop the pot criminals. Dozens of plants confiscated after the Pueblo County Sheriff's Office had yet another illegal bust. Sure enough, they had about 180 plants in different stages of growth um, and no paperwork to justify the licensing or the growing uh, or anything. This is the seventh drug bust in less than two weeks by the sheriff's office and Sheriff Taylor says he doesn't think it's going to stop. There's just a lot more than we're taking down, I guess as well. And they're, and they're going to continue to come. This all comes as a fight heats up over the future of recreational marijuana in Pueblo County. We're just asking for people's uh, vote as to whether they want to opt in or opt out of the retail sales of, of marijuana. Charlene Graham with Citizens for a Healthy Pueblo says busts like these reinforce their argument. Somehow we've been led to believe that the uh, black market would have gone away uh, when things got legal, and that's just not the case. But an opposing group, Growing Pueblo's Future, says if recreational marijuana is banned, illegal actions like this will continue. Spokesman Dan Corsentino says in a statement, quote, banning retail marijuana in Pueblo does nothing to stop people from growing illegally. It just encourages more people to purchase and consume through these illegal grows and operations. For his part, Sheriff Kirk Taylor says his work will continue. We're going to continue to be aggressive uh, in busting these illegal home grows as well as uh, any other illegal activity. In Pueblo, Katie Spencer, KRDO News Channel 13. Katie, thank you. And three people from Cuba who've been living in Florida will face charges for the latest marijuana bust in Pueblo County. All right, taking a look ahead at this afternoon, the Pueblo Rape Crisis Services is hosting its third annual Walk a Mile in Her Shoes event. 
People are encouraged to walk a mile in high heels, and this event looks to raise awareness on sexual assault and gender violence. Registration fees are $20. You can register at the Pueblo River Walk Boathouse starting at 11 o'clock this morning. A pretty nice morning for that. And also looking ahead today, the YMCA is hosting its annual military father-daughter ball in Colorado Springs. All military dads and daughters are aged 2 to 18, and they're invited to attend the Double Tree by Hilton. That's where the event is. It begins at 5.30. It features a dance, picture sessions, carriage rides, and a dinner. You can stop by and say hi to KRDO News Channel 13's Chief Meteorologist Rachel Plath. She'll be there to MC this event. The YMCA says this tradition is a way to give back to military families. Time now, 8.43. The FBI continues to have problems with Apple and their iPhones. We'll tell you what the agency wants from the tech company this time around. And it's been a good week for private company SpaceX. Find out what achievements that took place for the company that's out of this world. That's all coming up. Welcome back, everyone. A live look right now in Crested Butte. You can't see too, too far because of all the snow out there. Wow, that's pretty cool to see. 43 degrees, and our time is now 846 on your Saturday morning. Three men have been rescued from a remote Pacific island after they spelled the word, the word help in the sand from using palm fronds. Take a look at this photo. It's taken by the Coast Guard. These sailors had been stranded on this un. On this island, rather, for three days. Wow, that is amazing. Officials say they received a notification earlier this week that a ship was missing. A U.S. Navy ship from Japan was searching this area when they spotted the men holding life jackets and with the makeshift sign, as you can see here. This happened on Thursday morning. Wow, that is an incredible story. Glad everyone is okay. 
Officials with the FBI say they still want Apple's help cracking into suspected criminals' iPhones. Now, the agency said it could not unlock a Brooklyn drug dealer's phone using the same method as it did with a San Bernardino shooter's iPhone. Officials say the drug dealer's phone may have clues about other deals, but Apple says the drug dealer's phone has a different operating system. The company has not made any indication that they will listen to the FBI's request. SpaceX has launched a rocket to bring an expandable habitat to the International Space Station. Take a look. Three, two, one. Engine ignition, lift off. And there it goes. Now, this is its first resupply mission to the station since another SpaceX rocket broke apart in flight last year. Now, the rocket is a prototype that will attach to the station, then it will expand into the size of a small bedroom. Astronauts will enter it only about four times a year to conduct experiments, but NASA says this technology could end up being used in future missions to Mars. Very cool. Also, Space, SpaceX has successfully landed its first stage booster on an ocean platform. Taking a look at the video right now, this is too cool. Now, you may remember the company tried to do this last year. Famously, though, it tipped over and exploded. This happened earlier this year. Now, that was not the case this time around. Employees gathered around Mission Control and wildly cheered, of course, after this successful <laughs> landing. That is just too cool to see, Jay. I know you love that. You got to nerd out neat. a little, right? That is pretty <laughs> neat. Of course, somebody from Florida who's seen a lot of rocket launches, you usually don't get them back. That's pretty cool that you can actually get them back now. Mm -hmm. Let's take a look at our monument camera a little closer to home now, a Woodmore Drive camera. Tri Lakes Fire and Rescue in Monument brings it to us. This is 125 and, or 105, I should say, an I-25, that is. Travel impact for your Saturday drive does include a chance for some showers along the northern portion of 25 between the Springs and Denver, especially. Also, a rain chance on 24 and 50 between the Springs and Minturn and between Pueblo and the Monarch Pass. Details in that forecast let you know what happens in your hometown for your high temperature and what that snow might look like. Yes, we're talking about snow despite temperatures in the 60s and 70s today. Details coming up after this short break. Two and a half? Okay. All right, fun. A mix of sun and clouds takes us through our Saturday morning around most of southern Colorado. We're seeing some clear skies in some places, but this is more likely what you're seeing as you look out your window this morning at the Vieira Wireless Network camera showing us that mix of sun and clouds in Orway in Crowley County. As we finish off a day, places like Orway out in the plains are going to get to the upper 70s, and some of them are going to get above 80 degrees. 80 is your high today in Lamar. 78 in La Junta. Meanwhile, as you head closer to I-25, temperatures sitting in the 60s and 70s. 68 your high today in the spring, 75 in Pueblo, 74 at Canyon City, and temperatures in the mountains will be topping out in the 40s, 50s, and 60s. 65 for Slidus, 46 in Leadville, 55 in Gunnison, and 61 your high today in Alamosa. Skycast as we go through our Saturday afternoon into our Saturday evening and beyond, it's going to call for a chance for some isolated showers. 
watch out for a couple of rumbles of thunder. Haven't heard a whole bunch of them so far this year, but it's a possibility today with some of the stronger showers that we see make their way through the region. You see what happens as we go through our Saturday afternoon. Possibilities there for some of those heavier showers to make their way across the I-25 corridor. So watch out in the springs later on this afternoon. Of course, you're heading out to the switchbacks. You might want to consider a poncho with you as you go through the later portion of the game as that's when we'll see the best chance for that rain and possibly mixed in with some snow as you head further up the hills up into the high country where some of the highest elevations in the state will see some decent amounts of snow. The GFS, the American Mile, calls for some of that snow to make its way into the Pikes Peak region as well, about four and a half inches. Watch out for a possible slick morning commute for our friends in Woodland Park as we go through our Monday morning. Meanwhile, a little bit less in Colorado Springs according to the European model, but still there's a possibility for some snow to mix in with the rain as we are going to see another storm system. A cool front make its way through the region, which will change over some rain that we'll see as we go through this weekend to possibly some rain mixed in with snow or just out and out snow in some places. As you see, your temperatures do fall off of the table between Saturday, Sunday, and Monday, especially between Sunday and Monday. We top out in the mid to upper 60s on Saturday and Sunday, then only 50 on Monday. Then we get into the upper 50s to right around 70 by next Thursday, drop it back just a shade by next Friday. In Pueblo, lower to middle 70s this weekend, gives way to middle 50s on Monday, then it's 60s and 70s throughout the rest of your forecast. Lows in both cities sitting in the 30s and 40s. Canyon City, we're in the lower to middle 70s as we go through our weekend, lower 50s on Monday, then it's 60s and 70s throughout the rest of our extended forecast too, with a small chance for rain and snow taking us all the way through Wednesday. In Teller County, 50s and 60s for our high temperatures, then it's lower to middle 40s on Monday, good chance for rain and snow. Tuesday features a chance for some rain and snow as well that lasts in fact all the way through Thursday in Woodland Park and in Teller County. But most of what we see falling in the form of rain later on in the week as temperatures do top out once again right around 60. We'll drop it back just a shade on Friday with another slight push of cool air. All right, so that gradual phase into, you know, snow, rainy yeah. conditions. We've had a pretty nice stretch, but we could use the moisture. So, you know, if that's you're right. going to look at the bright side of things, that's definitely it. And a storm that we'll be tracking coming from the Pacific right. Ocean from the southwest, desert southwest, will actually be giving us some enough moisture to maybe give us uh, a little bit of a reduction in the fire danger later gotcha. on this week. Well, that's good news. All right, Jay, thanks so much for the heads up. Well, she's a good-natured and gentle giant looking for a, a home to call her own. Gretchen Presley introduces us to Rosie, our pet of the week. Good morning. I'm Gretchen Presley from the Humane Society of the Pikes Peak Region. And my very pretty little friend today is named Rosie. Rosie is a seven-year-old spayed mastiff lab mix. This gorgeous girl has been in and out of HSPPR since the beginning of February. And all Rosie wants is a home of her own. She is looking for a loving, patient household and a gentle family who will stay by her side forever. Rosie is very, very sweet with people. And our staff have fallen head over heels for her amazing eyes. She is calm and good natured and she knows basic commands. Rosie doesn't always do well with dogs in her personal space, so she would do better as an only dog. She is looking for an owner who is home a lot and who can give her the attention she deserves. Rosie would benefit from crate training in her new home. Please help us spread the word about Rosie. We know the perfect home for her is out there somewhere. Could you be what Rosie has been waiting for? Rosie's adoption fee is $150, which includes a voucher for a veterinarian exam, vaccinations, 30 days of pet health insurance, a one-year dog license, and a microchip. Visit our website at hsppr.org, like us on Facebook, or come down to 610 Abbott Lane to meet Rosie and all her furry friends. Does your pet have a great adoption story? Tell us how your HSPPR alum has changed their life by posting their story on social media with the hashtag Happy Tales, Happy Hearts.
Hi. Okay. Yes. I mean, are you saying is it easily, is it readily like available, or do I eat a lot? No. No. But I, it's cheap and it's everywhere, so. I have a friend who used to work in Portland. Oh. He worked at the uh, one of the stations in Portland. And he was saying right. Lobster. Right. Yeah, it's not really a big deal to see lobster. It's super easy to get and it's cheap in Maine. I can't get over how expensive it is, and it's not good here. Yeah. Hey, morning everyone. A live look in Walsenburg right now. You can see it looks a little windy with a flag blowing around. This is at our Spanish Peaks Veterans Community Living Center Neighborhood Weather Network cameras. Ooh, that's a mouthful. 50 degrees and uh, Jay, a nice start to our weekend, but as we've been warning people, uh, it's going to change. Yeah, we'll see a chance for showers and isolated rumbles of thunder later on this afternoon. But right now, temperatures are fairly mild. 52 in the Springs, 55 in Canyon City, 51 in Pueblo. We're seeing some 50s and even some upper 40s as you head out and about in the Plains and also in the high country, 51 in Salida. Skycast is going to call for this chance for showers and storms. We go through the rest of the afternoon. You see it right there. The yellow's on your screen. And that's going to indicate where the heavier showers and possible rumbles of thunder are going to be. Then we see it fade away as we go through the rest of the evening. Mike Everett does track any showers and storms that do pop up for you this afternoon. We'll see what happens in terms of where they develop and how much rain they do wind up dropping. A little moisture is not a bad thing. Right, we could definitely use that moisture. All right, Jay, thanks so much. Thanks so much, everyone. Have a great Saturday.